Hello and welcome to Huss Video's interview series. Today we'll be talking with Silas from the legendary punk rock label Black Lung. Silas, thanks for doing this interview with me. Uh, no problem. What are your memories of the Norfolk, Virginia Beach area punk rock and roll scene in the late 80s and early 90s and what was it like? By the late 80s and early 90s, most of the good punk bands come and gone, hardcore, turned to metal and stuff, and that's when the M80 started, <clears throat> the first by Real Garage punk band, and so most of the shows I remember from around then <clears throat> involved the M80s, which were awesome, every single one of them, which is fucking great, and then it's a spawn off of them, by the early 90s, the candy centers came around and started bringing other bands to town, and <clears throat> obviously things just got better and better, and then the M80s broke up, and went on obviously the Big Bobby and the Nightcaps who were you know equally just as good in their own way just a different type of thing and they brought a lot of other bands <clears throat> into town that we got to meet and just sort of snowballed from there so how much did uh, Skinny's records influence that scene and uh, who were some of the key people who were making things happen in Norfolk at that time as far as promoters well Skinny's for me was great because when I was young you know, from the time I was 14 on, I could go buy records there, you know, literally anything I wanted, and got turned on to a lot of good different types of rock and roll because of them. And Skinny himself, Jeff Kleitz, the owner, was a really good guy. He was a serious drug addict. He's dead now, but he was a really good guy. And, <clears throat> we, you know, help you out, turn you on to shit, but he's also kind of a freak. And he actually was in a band, God's Will, who were a pretty important hardcore band at the time who had one seven inch out and uh, Rusty Floyd who ended up being a drummer in the M80s played in them too and now they're getting a little bit of a resurgence uh, there's a band from Richmond called Wasted Time that actually uses their sleeve as a <coughs> mock up for their new record but Steve Athey the other owner of Skinny's is a total piece of shit and is hated by probably more people than anyone I've ever known, just the quintessential dickhead record store douchebag, you know, always listening to some fucking Motley Crue or whatever and just as, as worthless of a motherfucker as you could ever possibly meet. So that's the influence of the Skinny's record scene. And uh, as far as other promoters go, uh, uh, Big Bobby, uh, M. Eddie, Larry May, just, you know, the same people that you would imagine from these bands were actually doing it all themselves. There was never a and during my time, anyway, never real any real promotion companies that were bringing in anything worth a while. Uh, what was the first punk band you remember seeing? The first punk band I remember seeing was probably I don't know the actual first, but there was a band called Dead Aim from Virginia Beach that probably played from maybe '84 to '87 that we would go see all the time. They would open up for things like. COC. Um, I saw the HR band when their first album was out, like right after the Bad Brains. Uh, there was a band called Schmeiser from Norfolk that I sort of got the tail end of that was around the God's Will era, but I was a little young for all that stuff. Um, so bands like that. There was a band from Richmond called Unseen Force, a band from North Carolina called Subculture would come around, and just shit like that. No. I never got to see any like big bands that would usually go to Richmond or DC or something. What was the first show you saw that inspired you to want to be into rock and roll and the underground scene? I'd say as far as the underground scene goes, just those early hardcore shows that I would go to with my friends, uh, mainly Jay, who sings for Black Jesus, who is still one of my best friends now. Um, you know, we would just go to these underground shows, a lot of which the bands I can't even remember, but it just always seemed fun and more fun than just the corporate bullshit you would hear on the radio or whatever so it just sort of inspired us and then the actual putting out records all started with <clears throat> this red m 80 cup we did on read recordings that the m80s were breaking up and it was a bunch of songs they had and it was sort of two different camps the eddie and rusty camp who were going on with the m80s and then the wit and rob camp who had sort of an ousted out who were my best friends so we put out that cd pretty much just to get a jump on the other M80s putting it out and uh, it worked out well and then after that the nightcap started so we put out their record and then mainly just records of bands that we liked that we didn't think anyone else would put out their record you know? so there was a two year gap between the release of the M80s record and the birth of Black Lung Records yeah because the M80s when we put out sort of you know, naive thinking that maybe we'd be able to sell some and put out much, 
stuff based on that money and it, it didn't really work out like that but then within a couple of years we decided we still wanted to release records so that's when we did the Black Jesus and the Big Bobby right around the same time what made you decide to change directions from a CD format to doing seven inch vinyl? Well, originally that C that M80 CD, they had had mostly vinyl up until then, and we just there were so many songs on it because it uh, encompasses like 1988 till 93, pretty much the original lineup of a lot of different eras. So we just wanted to fit a lot of stuff on it, and the Get Hip album was just out, and we really thought that that's something people would want to buy, and then. A couple of years later, by the time we started doing it just strictly for the love of, you know, the couple songs, the seven inch just seemed the way to go because I've always been a big seven inch fan of since I was a little kid. So, do you have any good stories about anyone doing crazy or funny shit during those times? Back then, um, I don't know. There was a friend of mine, Kevin, who's dead now, who was the M80s roadie for a long time, and. He would do stuff, I don't know how crazy it is, but like we went to North Carolina one time for a big M 80s gig and it was probably February, the middle of the winter, and we're in these hotel rooms and the cops come at like 7 in the morning and trying to kick our door down and we've got in the parking lot and they've got Kevin who's dead now too and uh, he's totally naked wearing nothing but a toilet seat cover for a life preserver and he's soaking wet and the cops had to rescue him out of the ocean trying to swim to England or wherever. And, uh, you know, there's all kinds of Kevin stories, but I'm sort of at a loss for that shit right now. All right, thanks a lot, Silas, and uh, hey. thanks for watching Hus video. Cool.